Today, Mom and I are gonna show you how to make a cast iron pizza. Let's get started. Okay, for the uh, pizza dough, we're taking two cups of plain flour and two tablespoonfuls. I know that sounds like a strange amount, but it's just that little extra flour, and I'm going to put that right here in the food processor. Well, that made a mess. To that, I'm going to add one and one-fourth teaspoon of yeast. And one, or excuse me, three-fourths teaspoonful of salt. Knock that off. Put my lid on. You don't have to make your own pizza dough. You can actually buy a frozen one that's fairly good, but I tell you, I just like making everything fresh and then I know what's in it, and I like that. Now I'm gonna turn this on and it's gonna be kind of loud. You want to pulse it about four to five times and you're gonna mix all of that together. So now we're gonna pulse that five times. That seems kind of like something that's really not necessary, but it evidently is, so we'll do that. It mixes it up, makes it a little even. And to that, I'm going to add a tablespoonful of a good olive oil. And I'm gonna turn that on low as I add that. And I'm also going to add three-fourths cup of warm water. You want it warm enough to kind of dissolve that yeast and make the yeast want to rise, but not so hot that it's going to kill the yeast off. I always said if you can stick your finger in it and it doesn't feel bad, it's probably a good temperature. Otherwise, you're looking for 110 degrees. You can see that's beginning to mix and kind of pull away from the bowl. We're going to turn that off. Take the top off and take a look at it. And as you can see, it has formed a nice little ball. There's kind of one on each side there, just because of the blades that's in there. But that's just right. It's a little sticky, but not too sticky that you can't work with it some. Now if it's really sticky, what you need to do is add just a little bit of flour and you're not wanting to add very much. Okay, so we have uh, put just a little bit, probably about a tablespoonful of flour on our countertop here. And we're gonna begin to knead that just a little bit. You don't need to knead it very long just enough to kind of, you're working out air bubbles is what you're doing. You're making it where that it's gonna be nice and smooth. After all, when you put it in that cast iron skillet, you wanna be able to put it in there and kind of spread it out. So you need it to be workable. Actually, that turned out just pretty good. In some breads, they want you to be very aggressive when you knead your uh, yeast breads, but I've found that you get a much tender bread if you just knead it more gently. We've got a nice smooth. It's ready to begin to rise. Okay, to a large bowl, I'm going to add, oh, maybe a teaspoon of my olive oil. Kind of spread that around a little bit on the 
bottom and the sides. You don't have to have very much, just a little bit. You're going to put your yeast still in there, put it on the bottom, turn it over. And now I'm lucky enough to have a bread proofing in my oven. So instead of leaving it set on the counter to rise, I'm going to put a piece of saran wrap over the top of it so it doesn't dry out, put it in my oven, set it on bread proof and leave it for Second one hour. Our pizzas, we're going to make a no cook pizza sauce. And the reason we're going to make it no cook is because if we cook it, then we're going to actually cook it twice when we bake it and it's going to taste more like a lasagna sauce. And we really don't want that. We want that acid still from the tomato whenever we eat our pizza. What we've done is we've taken a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And if you want, you can use whole tomatoes. And we've drained them. And we're going to stick that here in our food processor. Make it a nice mess like I usually do. To that, we're going to add one fourth a teaspoon of black pepper, one fourth a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of dried oregano. Two teaspoons of minced garlic. If you want to use fresh, you can. One teaspoon of red wine vinegar. I may have gotten a little heavy on that one. You gotta wash it sometimes. And we're gonna add one tablespoon of olive oil. This is a very simple pizza sauce. Okay, we're gonna take our food press saucer and we're gonna Blend this for 30 seconds. All right, what we want, we want this to be a smooth consistency. Take this out. And as you can tell, it's got that nice smooth consistency. And we're actually going to, all right, we're going to stick this in our cup. What we're looking for is two cups of pizza sauce. All right. Take our spoon here. Make sure you get the rest. I'm trying not to cut myself because I would do that. All right, as you can tell, it's not quite two cups. So what we're gonna do, the um, tomato juice that we had left over from the uh, diced tomatoes, we're gonna go ahead and pour that in and fill it up to the two cup line. Mix that all together. And this is our um, no cook pizza sauce. Okay, we're getting ready for our pizza dough to go in the pan. I'm going to put about two tablespoonfuls of virgin olive oil in there. And I'm going to just spread that around. You want it sort of on up a little ways on the side. Get it good there on the bottom. We like a lot of flavor with our pizza. And with this pizza, uh, you're not putting a whole lot of different toppings and stuff on the top of it. So to enhance that flavor just a little bit, we're going to put it into the crust. So what we're going to do now is I've mixed together here half a teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoonful of salt, and one teaspoonful of garlic powder. And I'm just going to sprinkle that kind of evenly over my oil there and you can still see it in the oil so you know if you're getting kind of heavy or not you don't want a whole lot I've, I'm gonna have some left over this is a 12 inch cast iron skillet and then I'm gonna take just plain old yellow cornmeal and we're gonna scatter that sort of on the bottom it's kind of like dusting when you do a cake a little dusting 
uh, you don't want a whole lot, but this will help your pizza crust to not stick to the pan. And it's gonna add just a little bit of flavor. And believe it or not, it will actually help it to brown on the bottom. Now what I put in there was probably somewhere between one and two tablespoonfuls of the cornmeal. Okay, my pizza dough has about doubled in size. It's been in there just a few minutes over an hour. I'm going to divide that dough in half. And the reason is this pizza only takes half. And tomorrow we will do a dessert pizza for you. But for today, we're gonna do just the regular pizza. To save that dough, you want to rub it with just a little olive oil. Oh, probably a teaspoon. Rub it in your hands, put it over the dough. Place it in, you can put it back in the same saran wrap that you had over it while it began to rise. Wrap that up good and tight. Put that in the refrigerator and we'll use that later. Okay, now a lot of times what, you, what they show you doing is rolling your dough out. Pizza dough is very stretchy. You can just use your hands if you want to. Make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. Now I've still got just a little bit of that oil on my hands from putting the other one in that plastic, so it's stretching out pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this out to where that it's almost the size of the inside of my pan, but it will leave it about half an inch. Okay. Now you can measure this if you want to just be on the dot, but me, I'm just gonna kinda take it. Now it is a thin crust pizza. Look how well that holds together. That always amazed me about pizza crust. But the thing is, you're gonna kinda shake that in your pan. That way it goes all the way around. Oh, isn't that amazing how that worked? That oddly shaped piece that I had over there, I just stuck it in there and it began to take form. Now what this will do is, as it cooks, it will kind of puff up around it and be just a little puffier, but right now it's pretty thin in there. Okay, now we're gonna put our tomato sauce that we fixed beforehand. And we're gonna to try to pretty evenly spread that. We don't want it real thick. Our main ingredient in this pizza is the cheese. You need a little bit of that sauce just because it has a lot of the flavoring in it. But we want the cheese to be the the princes in this pizza. It's gonna be the one that shines. Now when you're looking at making this, if you make your own crust, you can buy it pre-made if you want, but whenever you make your own crust, and even with adding all of the cheese, you're looking at this pizza costing less than $5 to make. And unless you're really a big pizza eater, you've probably got enough there to feed four people. Okay. Now we're gonna take our mozzarella cheese. There's several things about this that's important. We've cut it about a fourth of an inch. It comes in little round rolls and we're gonna put that just about half an inch from the edge there. You want it cold because mozzarella Whenever it begins to heat up, if you're not careful, it separates. That's a strange thing, but it does. So we're just going to place those around there. And I like lots of cheese on mine. And as you see, this is going to come out just right. There we go. That took one whole little package of mozzarella cheese. We want our crust to be nice and crispy on the bottom. Uh, it doesn't really get that way sometimes by putting it into the oven. So I've heated my oven to, um, or my um, stove top here to 
a medium heat. Uh, I've set my cast iron skillet on top of this and this is not a number of minutes that you can just say it's done in and so many minutes. You have to just keep watch. And what I'm gonna do is watch this. Eventually I will check around underneath the edge just to see if it's beginning to turn a little brown. Okay, I have checked this and it is beginning to get just a little spotty brown on the on the bottom. Let me see if I can pull it up so you can see it. See how that is? That is ready to come off of the heat and go into our oven, which is set at 500 degrees. And we will leave it in there from seven to 10 minutes. I'm gonna check mine in about seven minutes. It has been seven minutes and I'm going to take out the pizza. Set that on a wire rack and I'm going to add just a little more cheese. This is Parmesan cheese. Reason we didn't put that on before is it kind of has a tendency to burn if you're not careful. And we're not even putting a lot on there. This is probably going to be one fourth cup at the most. I'm trying to fill in those little places that just has sauce. Does that look good or what? All right. I'm going to put that back in the oven for two minutes. Okay, we're gonna take our pizza out. It has been in the oven a total of nine minutes, seven minutes, and then we brought it out, put the uh, Parmesan cheese, returned it for two more minutes, and look, it's ready to eat almost. We're gonna slide that out. You do not want it to continue to stay in the pan, and the reason is it's liable to pull up some of that oil that's still in the pan and you don't want that. You want it to stay crispy on the bottom. Uh, let's see if you can see that. I had to have help getting that out because that was one heavy pan. Can you see the bottom there? It's nice and crispy. You can hear that. Sounds good. We're gonna let it cool for just a little bit. And while we're letting it cool, it needs just a little something on the top. Now you can put a sweet, fresh basil kind of broken up on top of this if you want to. Me, I'm gonna use just a little parsley flakes and not very many because I don't want it to really change the flavor of that cheese and the what I've got in it. There we go, we've got homemade pizza.